Hey guys, welcome back. Steve here. As you can see, I'm standing beside the long tail bike I had built about a year ago. I built this for my son to uh, bring his trombone back and forth to school, and he's pretty much been riding this bike uh, every day until he broke his arm. Uh, but he'll be riding it again pretty soon. I'll have to take this basket off so we can get his trombone back on there. Uh, so in this video, I'll be reviewing this bike. In this video, you'll get my unbiased opinion on this bike. After I built this bike, the first thing I noticed was how smooth it rides. I can say that after a year of riding it, uh, it still rides as smooth as its first day. I contribute this to the bike only having one gear, which uh, is less moving parts and, you know, very low maintenance. In fact, I haven't done anything to this bike's drive since building it. On that note, I guess we'll start off with the drivetrain. I'm running a 16 tooth no name freewheel and that is mounted to a surly single speed hub. Up front I'm running Shimano Z cranks with a 36 tooth chain ring. As I said no problems with this setup. The only downside to all of this of course is that the bike cannot be shifted. Uh, I was back and forth on this for a while when I was in the design phase of this bike but I can say today I'm glad I went with single speed. So uh, for frame stiffness, overall the bike is plenty stiff enough for its intended purpose. That is uh, a commuter bike so my kid can transport his trombone back and forth to school. Uh, but I did have one case where I had a pretty good amount of groceries on the back and I could feel some twist flexing from back to front. Uh, it wasn't bad but definitely noticeable. Having no experience with any other long tail, I didn't have a point of reference Reference, if it was uh, a lot or normal. I will say the only time I noticed it is when I was standing and uh, really cranking on the pedals, so I guess it's fine. So the front end is pretty much a standard BMX setup except for the rack attached to the front forks. The rack uh, works well and so far has not cracked anywhere. And to be fair, the only thing I've transported on here was a bag of groceries, but I never did intend this to carry much more weight uh, than that, especially since it's attached to the forks and you know more weight would make the steering difficult. So yeah, works well. Speaking of which, uh, the steering on this bike is such that riding no hands is pretty much impossible. Um, well, it is possible but really hard as you can see here. Um, I haven't drilled into why that is yet but I do know that some bad combination of uh, head tube angle, fork rake, and wheel size is likely causing uh, undesirable trail on the front end. At some point, I do need to uh, find out what my angles are and sizes and figure out what my actual trail is. All I know now is that from feel, uh, it's not great. I really need to uh, educate myself on the front end and steering so someday I'll you know, know more about this stuff and be able to avoid this sort of thing in the future. So for top tube length, I forgot what the actual length is but to be brief, it feels great. Uh, no one in my family is over 5'3", not yet anyway. Uh, it's a shorter than usual top tube length for a shorter than usual family. <laughs> uh, stand over height is great, again made for short people. Uh, C-tube angle, so I thought at first after designing the bike that the angle would not be enough. It has roughly the same angle as my first frame build, which is 72 degrees. I think my first was like 71, but 1 degree is barely a difference. After feeling how it rides, I can not say it feels just fine. On to the handlebars. So I designed this bike to take BMX bars due to their high rise. But the drawback is that uh, nearly all BMX bars are too wide. And it can get sketchy while riding on the sidewalk. Um, I know bikes aren't supposed to be on the sidewalk, but you know my kid, he he rides on the sidewalk because he's uh, he's a kid. That's what kids do. 
Um, although he's getting older and is starting to ride on the street, I do see me um, modifying these bars in the future at some point, somehow making them less wide. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Moving on to the brakes. They're super smooth and they work great. And that's all I have to say about that. Next, let's talk about paint. If you guys watch the video of me painting this bike, you'll know my opinions on the choices I made. To be frank, I'm not a fan of the paint I used on this bike. And I say that only in this context where I was painting a raw, raw steel frame. I think the paint I used is best applied to an existing professional finish that is like a factory, you know, professionally pre-painted bike where the paint I was applying, uh, the paint I was applying would have, um, would have stuck better to something like that. All right, so the last thing I'll talk about is this frame bag. Uh, someone in the comments mentioned, uh, well, they were asking about it. And so I guess I'll just show how this thing is attached. Uh, you can see I'm, I've got Velcro tabs uh, that are sewn into the, uh, the seams of the bag. And uh, so there's one near the, the seat tube, down near the bottom bracket, and then the two bridges on the seat stays and the chain stays. And that's pretty much it. Um, I did take more footage of me opening this bag up and showing what the inside looks like, but I lost the footage, so sorry about that. Uh, it's what you would imagine. It's it's a bag. <laughs> you open it and you put the lock in and that's pretty much it. It's That's all it holds. So, yeah. Alright guys, that pretty much wraps things up. Um, I guess, in summary, I'll just say that this bike is... that I'm really happy <laughs> with the bike and um, yeah, this one's a keeper. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya.